Hello everybody, good evening and welcome into Dog Zone. On tonight's show we look back to Sunday in the running of the Group 1 Waterloo Cup. We also look forward to Thursday at Addington Raceway, the time-honoured Robinson Rose Bowl, the field going around there. Just the six runners, but still uh, a fair bit of quality in that field. And also some New Zealand Racing Series races that have uh, either taken place or will take place this week. So a fair bit to get through on tonight's show, where we have a triple header for you all to enjoy. Firstly to Mark Rosanowski. Rosso, you had a week off last week, although looking after the kids at home during the holidays, I'm guessing not much rest going on there. It's a different type of work, Andy, and the pay is rather poor, but however, nice to be back, and I was lucky enough to be in the studio on Sunday. Also looking forward tonight to uh, talking about an announcement coming out of the Wanganui Greyhound Racing Club about their uh, big night, which is the Spion Rose come December. We've got the New Zealand Cup to look forward to very shortly, and the Waterloo Cup on Sunday, another addition from an extraordinary race dating right back to 1878. But Philippa Morris, it was your opportunity on Sunday to be there while I watched in the studio. You're out in the sunshine there for another terrific edition of this uh, rather unique race. The weather certainly turned up for us, Rosso, as it did the quality of the racing. It was a fantastic day. And of course, a very good win by Robson and some nice runs in behind. Speaking of the Group 1 Waterloo Cup, let's take you back so you can enjoy it. The winner of it was Robson. You're looking for the dog in the gold rug of box number five. Well, thrilling by a bit of early speed going the way of Big Time Cooper and out by do we go to Robson. He's pretty handy underneath that is Big Time Seth. They followed a length back there by Thrilling Vice inside of runners there trying to look for rumours, no refusal. Dine a day back towards the tail there with Big Time Rod and just in front of them Big Time Levi. Off the top they come and Big Time Cooper. Here comes the run here now by Robson, the big boy. I think he said bye-bye. He has. He's put paid to them in three big bounces, Robson. He'll race away. He'll cruise away. He'll bolt home. Diner Dave. Then we'll go here now too. We've got big time Levi, big time Seth and big time Cooper. There was the running of the Group 1 Waterloo Cup. Robson to the four and Pip once he got himself nice and handy chasing big time Cooper down the back. He looked the winner a long, long way from home. He certainly did. As soon as he was handy on that bend, Andy, I think if you were in Peter Ferguson and Wendy's shoes, you would be pretty happy with where he was sitting with the likes of the two dogs that were in front of him not being overly strong. Yeah, precisely. Diana Dave, another big run from him into second, Pip, and uh, he didn't get a lot of luck in the early stages or down the back straight. He's unwound nicely up the straight there at Auckland and certainly stands him in good stead for the upcoming New Zealand Cup. Certainly does. Jeez, he's just a dog that just can't seem to get a little luck in these races. He was so far back on that first bend. Have a look at him here as he goes into it, Andy. I think he's last on the first bend. He's second or third last down the back straight. And Levi's actually in front of him, who manages to get third. So where Dave's sitting here, just a phenomenal run. Certainly was. We know he can put in late in the piece, Diana Dave. Rosso to you. The CD Raiders, obviously, uh, was headed by the big-time Cooper, the CD Speed. Leadster. Fourth all he can manage is kennel mate Levi nailing him late but certainly not disgraced in fourth. No certainly look um, I think there's a few runners there you'd say look these dogs are young they've got it ahead of them. Levi's not one of them he's been around and that's been a great grab for him to get up for third and get a decent sized stake there but the other two big time Cooper look he picked the jump he found the front and I thought he could win from there. He got rounded up very easily. We check across the top there. He dug in deep. I didn't think he'd run fourth across the top. And we've got to remember again how young this dog is. And he's already won a Group 1 and now he's been fourth in a Waterloo Cup. So no disgrace there whatsoever. And big time Seth, another one. He won his first seven. He then had an injury. He took a while to get another win. And now he has rebounded too with firstly that heat win and then that run in the final as well. So he's got it all ahead of him, a learning experience for him. Andy, the great thing really um, about that race was a very good winner who very nearly didn't make the final in a very rough heat last week when he tried to anticipate the start and he didn't quite get there. But luck's a fortune, as they say. Margins in Greyhound Racing very fine, and Robson takes another step forward. And we've always held him in high regard, of course, but now he's a Group 1 winner on a two-turn track at Monaco. Yeah, certainly good to see him get some Group 1 success. And speaking of Robson, we are joined on the phone by his trainer, Peter Ferguson. Pete, firstly, thank you for joining us and well done with your success on Sunday. Yeah, cheers, Andy. Thanks very much. Talk us through the run. He came out of the box as well. He was chasing big-time Cooper down the back. Were you fairly confident early on he could reel him in, in the home straight? 
Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, Andy, like he's, he's proved us, you know, his run home has always been phenomenal in any race he's been in. So, um, you know, I was just happy that he got around that first corner. And, you know, when he got to the 300 boxes, um, you know, I thought, well, you know, really it's our race to lose, but, you know, anything can happen. But um, I was certainly uh, breathing by then. <laughs> Yeah, certainly was a good effort from him, no doubt about that. In terms of moving forward now, is he off to Christchurch to have a stint at the New Zealand Cup? Yeah, well, he's got the heat um, here um, Sunday week at uh, Manukau, so um, obviously to run first and second at that, otherwise he's going to have to make three trips to Christchurch, which is not ideal, but um, yeah, so we'll have for the heat first, we'll take one race at a time, but yeah, certainly the New Zealand Cup is our next aim. And Peter, beyond that, there was talk on Sunday with Philippa asking you of course about the potential of going to a Melbourne Cup heat with automatic entry having won that Waterloo Cup. Have you had any more uh, thoughts, discussions with uh, co-owner Ian O'Neill about that? Yeah well we, we have um, Ian uh, obviously with his business they do a lot of um, you know the uh, animals, pets and that travelling backwards and forwards so he's going to go away and do a bit of homework on the costings and that sort of thing. And um, we'll just see, we've got to weigh up, you know, the cost and then obviously definitely the welfare of the dog because um, he's still only relatively young. Um, so, yeah, we'd, you know, we'd, we'd like to think we'd like to go, um, but um, we'd, we'd probably make sure that everything's 100% before we went. We wouldn't be going unless we were fairly confident everything was 100% um, with the dog and travel-wise and all that sort of thing. Peter, you've seemingly been, been very patient with this dog as races have been uh, well spaced. Has that been out of necessity or have, has that been a deliberate ploy by you and the team? Um, no, that's been pretty much deliberate. Um, my wife keeps accusing me of using too much bubble wrap, so we've run out of bubble wrap now, so the gloves are off. Um, so, yeah, look, it, I, I don't know whether it's... That's just the way I like to do things, so... Um, you know, I, I think he, when he came, he was a young dog and mentally and physically. And um, by taking the cautious approach, um, I, I think we'll reap the benefits um, in the future and, and we have already. Um, so, yeah, it's it's been nothing other than just the way I like to do things. Peter, he's a younger half-brother to Monster Fish, who was lethal on the one-turn track at Manawatu before his injury. And certainly early on, that's where Robson was showing his best and he won the... Uh, golden chase there at Manawatu himself but he's looked really good at Monaco do you prefer him on the one turn or the two turn track or does it simply not matter is he just that much of a versatile dog um, I probably prefer him on the one turn track because you're more likely to come off the track with the dog um, and that's really the only necessity. that's the only reason he hasn't raced more on a two turn track is, is the way I like to do things so um, yeah it's not that um, for any other reason but obviously when the big races come up you've, you've Know, that's where they are, so you've got to have a go. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think he's... I think he has got a... He, he did have a preference for a one-turn track, but the more he races on a two-turn track, I've been really pleased with um, since we've sort of sat down and raced him at Manukau a little bit more and, and, and going to Christchurch, um, he's really adapted to the two-turn track. So, um, you know, I think going forward, I don't think it's an issue either way, to be honest. Peter, you've been a high achiever in another code, harness racing, group one wins there. Look, when you turned your hand to greyhound racing, did you ever think you would find this level of success and potentially this early? Oh, look, probably definitely not, um, Rosso. I mean, I've been, I've, I've been blessed, to be honest. I've been very, very lucky, I mean, to be associated with someone, with someone like Greg Hoare early on. Um, who's just such, held in such high regard in the game. And, you know, he would have forgotten more than I'll ever know. Um, so, you know, that's been a huge help and, and that's meant that we've been able to get Andy dogs and I sort of um, got into it with a focus that um, I was, you know, it wasn't going to be a, a, so much as a profession, but I really wanted to get in and enjoy it. And I think, um, you know, going around twice a week just for fun was not really what I got it in, got in for it, into it for. So, um, yeah, that was always the plan, but the success so early, um, as I say, I'll, I'll be very lucky and, um, you know, I've been blessed with some really nice dogs and, um, you know, Robson's obviously at the top of that list. And obviously, Pete, uh, your name's on the trainers list, but in terms of the team at home, you've obviously got a few people behind you that make all this possible as well. Oh, absolutely. And um, I got told off by one of our owners, Michelle Northcott, the other day and said, why isn't Wendy in partnership with me? Because um, she pretty much does... 
at least 50 percent of the work if not more of it so um yeah that'll be have to be something we have to look at but um yeah no we have we've had a lot of help along the way uh, a lot of help from other trainers and, and um, some young fellas that have worked for us and um, it's a real team effort and i mean i think when you're involved in the racing industry in general i think there aren't too many stables around that uh, or kennels around that you know that's not the case so um you know there's always heaps of people to thank behind the scenes yeah, there certainly is. Well, thank you very much for your time uh, on the show here, Pete, and well done with your success on Sunday, and long may it continue in the future with uh, not only Robson, but the rest of your team. No, cheers. Cheers, guys. And, um, yeah, no, it's been, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure dealing with you guys. And, um, yeah, no, it's, um, you know, it's, it's just a huge buzz, um, the training group one, when that's for sure. And, um, yeah, something that uh, will stay with me forever, that's for sure. It certainly will. That was Pete Ferguson with his thoughts around Robson. And obviously, uh, we did speak about the Melbourne Cup there. On Sunday, Philippa caught up with Mick Floyd, racing manager of the Sandown Racing Club. Depending on who takes out the race, do you think it's worthwhile them coming over to Melbourne and trying to take on the best of the best over there? Yeah, absolutely. I think Dinah Dave showed in the National Sprint Championship back in August that uh, the best New Zealand dogs can certainly compete at, uh, at that level. And look, it's the Melbourne Cup. You don't give any chances to uh, to running the world's greatest grain race. So uh, absolutely, I think uh, the connection should make the trip over. Of course, being a week later, it doesn't clash uh, like it used to with the New Zealand Cup. So um, yeah, it'd be great to see the connections come over and have a crack at the Melbourne Cup. We're around eight weeks away. What are the standouts so far in Australia for you? Yeah, I think the uh, the, the greyhound at the moment, I think, uh, would um, if you were going to rank them, I guess, is Seneki. Uh, he's won a couple of group ones already. He was very good in the Adelaide Cup heats last week, and I think he'll win the final on Friday night. Um, Steve White, the trainer, has got a, a long-term plan for the uh, Top Gun and Melbourne Cup. So um, he's the one to beat, but there's a very, very good crop of dogs coming through at the moment. It's an interesting time at the moment. Uh, a lot of young dogs uh, just finding their mark, and uh, I think the Melbourne Cup series will be uh, something pretty special. How do you think New Zealand dogs kind of rate towards the Australian? Are we up to your top level or do we need to lift us a little bit more? Um, I think the, the very best dogs I think can certainly compete. Uh, obviously the, the numbers game means that the, the um, depth is probably stronger in Australia, um, no doubt, but uh, um, the, top, the top dogs in New Zealand have shown they compete at our level. So that was Mick Floyd with his thoughts around the Melbourne Cup and Pip obviously not only Robson but Dinah Dave a potential to go across and have a stint at it as well and I believe you caught up with Craig on uh, Trackside on Tuesday. How did he think Dinah Dave would fare across the Tasman? I think he's certainly going to be competitive. It's kind of what Peter Ferguson said though. It comes down to finances and what it's going to cost uh, to get across there. He said he's still kind of having that tussle with Paul Wheeler about how much he'll be paying and uh, maybe how much he'll be paying. Uh, so it's kind of a, it's a money situation I think at the moment and they'll probably go to the New Zealand Cup and then they'll see where they go from there. Speaking of big racing and money, Rosso, some breaking news coming out of the Wanganui Racing Club around uh, the Spion Rose night on the 6th of December. Yeah, pleased to be able to talk about this and um, unveil the fact that there's going to be a significant increase to stakes on Spion Rose night on Friday, December the 6th. Now the two feature races, the Group 1 Spion Rose stays at 46,000 as does the Group 2 Dash for cash for the sprinters at 16. But you can see there significant money for down through the grades with Maiden 7,390 final. Now the heats will be a fortnight prior on November the 22nd and there'll also be heats for the Class 1. So we'll have the richest maiden in Class 1 we've ever seen in New Zealand. The C2, 3, 4, 5 uh, features all over the 520 metres will be uh, best eight nominated under the club's criteria. Uh, Derby and Oaks will be there too. Team Hattrick, Derby and Oaks for the restricted age dog. So lots of options for trainers to consider and hopefully we'll cover off all four distances with stayers being catered for 6.45 and 7.55. Total stakes there Andy of nearly $150,000 and that will really highlight the Spion Rose which has become uh, a significant group one race in the last few years with the stake money that it's had but now looking to get the best of the best for around the country all on the undercard here and Andy we've discussed this before that so often our Group 1 races, there's one standout race. Now, if a number of trainers get knocked out of that race and don't come back for the final, it turns out that the heat night is actually the best night. Now, by providing the additional stakes here, potentially, if people are willing to travel for those, and you would like to think they would for what we've just seen there, Andy, that we will get the best dogs running from throughout the grades from around the country and we can really highlight greyhound racing on these group one nights which are relatively rare. I know it's not easy for clubs to uh, put on uh, you know an outstanding card and Christchurch has done a really good job the last few years on New Zealand Cup night 
but this is Whanganui attempting to really highlight their uh, biggest racing night of the year. And you have to take your head off to them as well. As you say, it's all about covering costs, and we've talked about that a bit uh, on the show with Peter Ferguson as well. And in terms of the southerners going north, the boat fare uh, can get a little bit expensive at times, so good to see that extra money going in, and hopefully we'll see the best of the best going to war uh, there on the 6th of December. Well, it's now time to have another look back to Sunday afternoon, this time the running of the New Zealand Racing Series Sprint Final. This was taken out uh, by the Lisa Cole-prepared Cheese and Chalk. He was uh, in the gold rug of box number five, and Philippa, there was a warm-priced favourite here in the form of Kiwi Boy, and unfortunately for his back, as he was plastered wide into the turn, and things looked pretty ugly for him from a long way out. Certainly did he just come together with Ashen, who also likes to get off the track, and as soon as that happened, uh, he was never going to be in the race, but take nothing away from Cheese and Chalk. He won it off the hop, straight to the front, and we see this all the time. And sprint racing, I'm going to say it again, box speed is gold. He's a strong dog, and as soon as he was out in front, he was too good. A couple of nice runs in behind from the likes of Suspicious Minds. He's just been going so well, but he copped an early check as well. Yeah, nice run as well, put by uh, the one dog there and Captain Kev, of course, a part of that really nice litter, including Buddy Boom. So uh, nice to see him competitive at the top level as well. Certainly was, and even Ginger Mongo. Yes, they may have just got a little bit of luck with those, I think it was about four dogs that went quite wide on the bend, Andy, but take nothing away from him. He found his rail, and he's a very tidy dog for Wayne and Tracy Steele. It's now time to look forward to Thursday and the running of a New Zealand Racing Series event over the extreme distance there at Cambridge. This will take place uh, at 2.32. It's race number nine on the card, 747 metres. Scratching of Dig, Dig, Dig. Let's Opal with Silver get a start off box number two. And Philip, the two class stayers of the field appear to be Opal, Hillary and Gold Star Sydney, although the draws have not been kind to them. They certainly haven't. Of course, it was Hillary's first look at the track, and I think maybe she needed it. It's kind of the same situation, isn't it, Andy? I think you do. Uh, some dogs need to have a look at the course. So she was, for mine, a little bit disappointing, but I think she could maybe bounce back, and this just depends uh, if she gets out and gets to that rail fast enough, because we know that's certainly what she wants. It certainly is. I think the good thing for her is the dog to her immediate inside little apple is not fast away. So uh, she should get some room to move. Opawa Tab could cause a, a concern for her. She can get forward early uh, at times as well. But no doubting that uh, Opawa Hillary uh, is the best stayer there. In terms of Gold Star, Sydney has had a look over the extreme distance at Ascot Park when uh, running third or fourth down there. So uh, no stranger to the one-turn track, although relatively inexperienced on it. But she has had a go uh, over that 700 metre journey at Ascot Park so that will certainly stand her in good stead. Also on Thursday there's a New Zealand Racing Series advanced final over 457 metres. Uh, this is race number 11 on the card at 3.09. Uh, headed up by Stefano, the Arch Lawrence charge comes up with box number 7. Now we're going to take you back to have a look at him winning his last start. This is him off the gold rug of box number five shows early speed, gets straight to the lead. This was on the 3rd of October. Philippa beats a handy field, beats a greyhound by the name of Thrilling Talk, who unfortunately isn't here, but geez, in just absolutely stunning form at the moment, Stefano, and all his recent wins and best of the night times. Geez, got to be tough. He certainly does. I think even Keysile was in behind in this race, and she went on to win on Sunday. He's just, he's won five in a row. He clocked a 25.57 in this. His personal best is 25.54. Only concern is he hasn't got the best statistics from out wide, but I think if he just continues to show this early pace in the field, Andy, he is going to be tough to beat. I didn't mind the six, though. Our Rick was in behind in that field, but he's been going very, very well, and he just excels here at Cambridge as well. Yeah, it's a pretty tidy field. Thrilling Amigo was second in a Manawatu Cup. He the fastest of those in behind a big time shadow. He's also uh, had a 600 metre event uh, there recently, so he'll be nice and hard and fit. And, uh, but what about the southerner Opawa deal? He had a look at Cambridge last week as well, and that will stand him in good stead for this event as well. Certainly think so. I think that's what he needs once again. Once you have a look at the track, he can just show improvement and where he's drawn this time. I wouldn't be surprised if he's right in the mix, Andy. Moving on to Thursday evening and Eddington Raceway, the running of the Robinson Rose Bowl. This is to take place at 8.38pm. Start the show off the two for Ray Adcock. Uh, we've got Ego Maniacal, the inside draw for Daniel Roberts, looking for two in a row. And of course, Avenger Bale, who's starting to find some form again. He comes up with a wide draw of box number eight, which uh, suits him down to the ground. Speaking of Avenger, he's the greyhound we're going to take you back to have a look at. This is him running third. 
He's in behind Ego Maniacal. Ego Maniacal in the pink rack here of box eight. Avenger Bell, there's black and white stripes of box number two. Pip, I think you caught up with Craig yesterday. What were his, his thoughts around Avenger Bell moving forward? He was wrapped with Avenger Bale's run in this. Of course, it's only his second run back from being off from an injury. And he's really hoping that he's going to go well tonight because he's trying to aim him for the New Zealand Cup, Andy. And if he gets in, that'll be his third New Zealand Cup uh, that he's made. So it'd be really great to see him go well. And with the small field and drawn out wide, I think he's a chance. However, Daniel Roberts, uh, his son in the one with Ego Maniacal, has drawn well. He certainly has, and that was a nice win by Ego Maniacal, only going to make things easier for him in the red rug. And uh, we've seen Craig go to war with his sons on a few occasions in some of these better races, and uh, Daniel certainly will give him something to think about. As will the two dogs start the show, who uh, has been racing Dinah Dave of late, so uh, he'll notice a little bit of a drop in class there as well. Well, on Monday, we saw two heats of the Manawatu Cup, the final to take place next Monday. Here's a look at the field for it, where She's For Us has come up with box number four. Now, others in the field, big time Shadow Rosso, who was the fastest qualifier, comes up with a squeeze draw of five, but She's For Us to his inside might just make things a little bit easier for him. It might, Andy. Uh, he's got big time Rhino to his outside, though, and big time Puma on the eight. So there's right to left pressure here. It's a pretty interesting final, this. We lost some good dogs on Monday. Thrilling talk, M Grand Park. And the one heat looked a very strong heat, but some uh, qualifiers that I didn't expect to get through, but they've earned their right to be there. Ken Shadow put two together in a week. Look, he had box one, uh, or a week apart, I should say, but he, he had box one and he... he he really was just the best shadow, but we don't always see the best shadow. And uh, even the kennel uh, unsure just how to work him out. And he's going to have to be right on his game there, as I say, with a couple of dogs out wide that like to uh, cut in. Thrilling Amigo still gives uh, Karen Walsh a really good chance, even though she didn't have an especially good day there uh, on Monday. Thrilling Joe missed the start too, and uh, she's for us as race. She's for us had the one, and that was ideal, and she fully used that. But as we know, Andy, uh, you know, closer to the rail, the better for her. So. That's a really intriguing race uh, on Monday, the Manawatu Cup final. There was an upset last year, big time Caleb won it. It was about 40 to 1 fixed, I think. Uh, and I think it could be open for that again, although I think Karen's got a pretty good chance there with Thrilling Amigo. He's going to have to muscle up in that race, and I think he can. Yeah, it certainly is an interesting affair. Speaking of Monday, we also seen a potential new star unveiled here in the form of Boys Get Paid for Team Turnwald. Uh, this is him winning a maiden. This is the first time we'd seen this greyhound on race day. He's the greyhound in the white rug of box number three. Straight to the lead, Rosso, 23.19. I think it's the eighth, eighth fastest time recorded over the 14 there at the Manawatu. And geez, he's on his way to some bigger and brighter things, no doubt about that. Oh, yes, indeed. They've unveiled a beauty here. It was a long-anticipated debut because he'd qualified on August the 5th, but he's still a young dog, and he's big too. He's 36 to 37 kilos. Now, he's out of Big Chicken, uh, who is a half-sister to Diddley, dual group one winner. Uh, dog there, incidentally, in the four. If you're looking at the dog out the back there, actually got its... Uh, uh, muzzle caught in the paw there but up front it was boys get paid with an outstanding opening sectional for a maiden and then running right through the line and as you say the eighth fastest time in all of the races we've had over the 410 metres since it was introduced boys get paid uh, are involved obviously and have uh, a significant share in the dog and there's another syndicate as well uh, who are largely made up of uh, a number of um, regular clients for the Angela Turmel team uh, they've paid good money for this dog, they've got him here, he has made a statement on debut, he will make his second start on Monday, steps to class one and again over 410 metres, but Andy, he is a restricted age dog and uh, you know, obviously looking forward, classic age races derby and the boys get paid syndicate, as I say, look, we saw that, that was on Monday, how many were able to get there to support the dog and it does make a significant difference to turnover of course although at $1.22 hard to back, uh, and, uh, and also atmosphere. I think that's about 60-odd on that Boys Get Paid syndicate, so they're certainly going to have a lot of fun with him, and as you say, they're going to add plenty of atmosphere to that. Pip, speaking of young greyhounds, we've spoken about him the last couple of weeks. Bolty down here in Canterbury, certainly making a splash. He's now broken the 17-second barrier twice uh, in his short career, and heading on to the Galaxy potentially, gee, he certainly adds a lot of excitement. That he does, he's aptly named too, 1687, that is fair flying for a very, very young dog. Daniel Lane would have to be uh, super excited.
Time now, we're going to take a look back at last week's bets. But before we do, Andy was throwing out a bit of shade last week. First day, Janice, yeah, we'll put it down to that. We'll, we'll give him one more week. If he doesn't improve, then he might be getting the getting the heave out the door, I think. But uh, we'll just see how he improves. And you I know what's going to happen this week. Go I'm, I'm going five for none this week. I was just going to say, you've got a big talk now, Andy. You best provide the goods. Five for zip this week. Five for zip. There's no doubt about that. When you hand out a bit of lip, that's what happens. Well, Andy, so that... you almost went five for zip. <laughs> yeah, it was close. Luckily, I went one from four, got one home. Otherwise, uh, Blake would have been taking my spot, I think, Pip. Yeah, you be, must be careful. At least Blake finally got one in there too this week, so Blake kind of hit back at you there. Looking back at that result, Mr Rosanowski, I'm disappointed. Uh, you might have had a week off, but you could have at least sent something through for us to tip the listeners. Well, I'm very pleased to say that uh, Blake Stoddart, that man that you did throw uh, a little bit of shade on last week, I backed his best bet big time, Charlotte, and that was my only bet of the week, Andy. Uh, having said that, follow yours and Philippa's as well, and generally with confidence. Well, I'm back this week. I'll throw out four. Uh, an each way play on Friday at Hattrick, our Hemi. Uh, drawn closer to the rail, crucial better for Monday's run as well. Tap out Bill, one on Monday, and I think can repeat at Wanganui on Friday off the one. Big time Rod will be short off the one you would think in race 10 and can deliver. And on Monday, Manawatu Cup Day, looking to big time Kobe, another dog who drawn close to the rail will be a chance. That's race 12 of 15. Philip, a couple of wins for you this week. Can you provide more? A little bit of pressure there, Orozzo. I would just went to a couple of bets this time at Cambridge. Enjoy the perks. I think follow your money with him. He's well drawn along with the five Billy Bright in race number seven. Then off to the cow on a Sunday. We are like Tiamo. Yes, he showed up well in a tidy field. Think it's a little bit weaker this time out. And then Cecilia Moore well drawn in the last of the day. Here's a look at where Blakey's heading for the following week. Colby Ness at Addington on Thursday night. Downgraded and dangerous. Sego Maniacal comes up with the red rug in the Robinson Rose Bowl on Thursday night and looks a big, big chance there and about to ignite. Due to burn, Monaco on Sunday comes up in the 10th with box number three. Here's where I'm heading. Colby Ness as well, unlucky for its connections. Uh, it's probably going to get dog zoned. Uh, I think she's pretty hard to beat. Downgraded, drawn the one. A couple of wide runners to her outside as well. So, uh, beautifully drawn there. Cool Bear knocking on the door. He's certainly due a winning turn. And up and trip, Mighty Muscle. Tipped him out last week. He was a little bit stiff. He's up to the 6-4-5 this week and off that beautiful uh, box of number one. He'll be pretty tough to beat. Well, that's about all we've got time for here on Dog Zone. Firstly, back to the man himself. Rosso, thank you for making yourself available again. Uh, what's in the week ahead for you? Uh, week ahead for me is Friday night at Hattrick and nominations were a little light but they have come up with a, a nice meeting at the end of it all and Manawatu Cup Day looking forward to Monday and of course uh, the second appearance of Boys Get Paid 23.19 on debut. It'll be interesting to see how the track's running and how it goes. Andy Blake also wanted me to, po wanted me to point out that um, his top tip in the Waterloo Cup just happened to be Robson. He's on fire. He's on fire. He's done better than me. I think I had him in for fourth. So well done to you, Blakey. You got one home, son. You got one home. To Philippa. Philippa, thank you for joining us on the show here uh, again. And I'm sure it won't be long before we have you back on here again. Thanks very much, Andy. Yes, hopefully it's around New Zealand Cup time. We're looking forward to that. It's not far away. And it was a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to be on track on Sunday. That's all we've got time for here on Dog Zone. We'll be back next week for more greyhound racing from around the country. But until then, happy punting.